Hi, this is Vijay from Microtech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform disaster recovery in storage account using private endpoints. The disaster recovery in storage account is a feature which helps you to fail over from one region to another region. It comes with two types. One is GRS, which is Geo Redundant Storage. Another one is REGRS, Read Access Geo Redundant Storage. In GRS based storage account, it's going to act as a primary and secondary kind of configuration where you will at, at any given point of time, you can only read or write into a primary storage account. But in RAGRS, you can use primary to read and write and you can use a secondary only to read the data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a failover from primary to secondary when you configured a private endpoint to those accounts. So if you can see the screen, the setup is as follows. You have a virtual machine, storage account and private endpoint configured. When you perform a failover from primary to secondary, the primary becomes unavailable and the secondary takes over. When the secondary takes over, it becomes LRS, which is locally redundant. So during that time, the one of the endpoint private endpoint IP address will not be able to, you will not be able to use that IP address at all. Also, when you perform this failover, actually the DNS configuration is coming to picture where the C name gets swapped, which means you will actually use the same FQDN to access your storage, but instead of the DNS pointing to the primary, it will be pointing to the secondary instance or the secondary region. So, so this is what we are going to do. So I have a lab demo ready. So next step is to, you know, go ahead and create this scenario and I can demonstrate how it's going to work. All right. So I have created a storage account in a resource group called storage A and name of my storage account is storage microtech. So if I open my storage account, you can see that my storage account is deployed in North Europe region and it has a second location as West Europe. So the replication mode or, or the tier which I have selected is read access geo redundant storage. So if I click on the geo repl replication, you can see I have my primary in North Europe and secondary in West Europe. So I have created a private endpoint uh, for this for which I can show you. So the PE1 is a private endpoint which is connected to the primary uh, region in the North Europe. And this private endpoint is deployed in a virtual network called VNet SA, which is present in North Europe. Um, and then I have a secondary private endpoint created. And this secondary private endpoint belongs to West Europe region. And you can see the target sub resource is blob underscore secondary. And this is deployed in a virtual network called virtual VNet SS hyphen secondary, which is in the West Europe region. So I have a virtual machine created. Um, so I created this VM because I can actually log into the VM and I can showcase you how the DNS resolution works and, and this VM is connecting to which storage account basically, right? I can do that. So this is a virtual network that I, uh, virtual machine that I have created. Um, uh, which is running in the virtual uh, network uh, called VNet SA, uh, which is deployed in the North Europe region. So before we get started, I'm just going to uh, show you something. Um, so uh, when you go to your storage account um, and click on properties, you can see uh, the endpoints um, of the storage account. So in this case, it's primary uh, endpoint of the blob services storage microtech.blog.co.windows.net. I'm using an open source tool called dig web interface where I can actually input my um, FQDN over here. And when I do a dig, I get the uh, a DNS, you know, uh, resolution. Um, so I have copied those and, and I basically I have it in this format in this one note um, on um, so notepad. Um, so basically I'm going to use pr primary primary endpoint. 
So the primary endpoint details is, is here. As you can see, the primary is blob.co.windows.net um, and it basically, you know, has a C name of private link.blob.co.windows.net. That private link FQDN again resolves to another C name, which maps to another C name, uh, which is this. This in turn returns to the public IP address over here. Right. Uh, similar to that, um, when you do a uh, you know a DNS or NS lookup to the secondary endpoint, you basically you know have a similar sort of configuration where it is pointing to a another primary, uh, another private link FQDN that in turn uh, points to another FQDN which in turn points to the public IP address. As you can see, those two public IP addresses are different. This belongs to private primary endpoint which is in North Europe, and this belongs to a secondary endpoint um, uh, in the West Europe. Right. So this is what this is how it looks like before uh, before we do a failover. Right. So I just logged into my virtual machine, which is which is present in the same um, virtual network as that of the um, as that of the uh, primary. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open uh, a command prompt here. Um, one second. So let's go. To a command prompt. I'm just going to execute NSLOOKUP space uh, the primary endpoints of storage account. So when I press enter, it's going to return me the private IP address of the um, of my private endpoint. So as you can see, um, so when I try to do NSLOOKUP to this FQDN primary FQDN of the storage, it is returning me the private endpoint of the primary uh, private endpoint IP address, which is 10.1.0.4. Right. So this is how it works normally. Right. So let's say the North Europe region had an outage and you wanted to do a failover. Right. In that case, what you need to do is you just need to go back to your uh, storage account, select geo replication and you can just click on prepare for failover. So when you click on this uh, button, it basically asks for a confirmation. Once you type yes, it's going to take like 15 minutes or so to fail completely failover from North Europe region to West Europe region. So once that failover is done, we can actually go ahead and review review this FQDNs again uh, on, on doing an NS lookup and see how the DNS uh, you know, uh, values are changed. Uh, and post that you can see uh, West Euro would be the primary uh, post the replication and then the West Euro will be locally redundant. It will be switching from REA GRS to LRS and if you want to revert that, revert that you basically need to do another failover uh, which is going to you know incur cost right. Uh, so, so basically uh, we are failing over from North Europe to West Europe post the failover, North Euro will no longer be available, West Euro will become LRS and you can use West Europe to access, read or write the data. And if, if the North Europe uh, data center is back, if you want to switch this current LRS storage account back to the uh, RA GRS, you can actually go ahead and configure that post then. So this failover is going to take like another 20 minutes. Um, so I'm just going to pause this video and once the failover is done, let's get started. Let's you know review how it works. As you can see there, the failover is successfully uh, completed, and uh, only West Europe is there, uh, which become which became LRS, and it is available. Uh, so I'm just gonna go back to my uh, dig interface. I'm gonna query the secondary endpoint. And you can see the response for the secondary endpoint is this, which is where you are not getting any IP address, which means the secondary endpoint is no longer available. So when I query the primary endpoint again, um, I'm just going to copy this um, entire stuff and uh, I'm going to post failover. So as you can see here, post failover you can see I'm getting a response when I query a primary endpoint, right? Um, uh, blah blah code of windows.net. I'm getting IP address of the secondary right? So before failover, uh, if I query st uh, storage microtech hyphen secondary, I'm getting this dot 51 IP. But now if I fa post failover, when I query the primary endpoint, I'm getting the secondary IP address, which means the IP address got swapped and that's how it actually works. So now let's go ahead and take a look. Um, so this is my virtual machine. I'm just going to do an NS lookup again, post failover. 
um, you can see it is still pointing to the same private endpoint IP address which is 10.1.0.4 right so this is how the failover happens and and this is something with that you kind of need to keep in your mind during the failover so post failover the private endpoints IP address will still be the same which means this IP address is actually residing in a virtual network which is present in North Europe not in West Europe so the failover only happens in the storage account level not on any sort of VNet level right so um, so currently uh, the VNet failover or the private endpoint failing over to the secondary private endpoint uh, is not not supported uh, in Azure as of today so these are all the uh, some important stuff that you kind of need to uh, have in your have in your mind during uh, you know performing the failover so if you want to revert the change um, uh, basically you just need to go back to your configuration and um, and you can select um, the replication method as uh, read only or geo redundant access and then click on save so this is another you know, this is another you know long running process which is going to take um, uh, some time to reflect so if I go back to the geo replication um, it will say the failover is uh, you know it to be initiated so basically it's going to take some time um, around another 15 or 20 minutes and post that you know uh, once this um, uh, you know entire sync happens between the primary and secondary um, you can see both will be available to use um, yeah uh, so this is what I wanted to cover in this video uh, hope you guys all enjoyed it thank you